Today, I am super excited because I have one of the kings of TikTok here with me. Ian Paget is in the building via Zoom. Hello. Hi. Oh my God. King of TikTok. I am far from it, but that's very sweet. I just, I don't consider myself king of TikTok at all. Um, but anyway, I'm ha very happy to be here um, and chat with you. So this is going to be fun. I'm excited for this because obviously I was one of the people, like obviously we all got into TikTok during the pandemic and everything. And mm -hmm. being that I am a millennial, I was a little later to it because I wasn't really sure like what it was or what was really like going on same so, same <laughs> but you were actually one of the people that like got me to watch tiktok because i was like okay it's not just like weird things like this is so entertaining to watch mm, that's really sweet um yeah it's it's still uh a really beautiful thing when people like say that i think that's one of the best things about the weird thing that happened with you know becoming kind of like known on social media is that these people feel very um connected to us or, or to, you know like they when we were together and all of that um and it's very sweet and i i really do take that with me every day because it's like it just means like uh we were you know i don't know connecting with people and it felt it feels nice I love that. And I like to start every interview with a very simple question. I like to ask people, how are you? God, that's a good way to start. Um, I'm good. I'm a little hungover because I actually last night went to go see um, this new A24 movie called Dicks the Musical. It is, yeah, it's, it's, what were we going to say? I said I'm intrigued. <laughs> It, yeah, I, it's, um, you'll check the trailer out. It's, uh, you know, A24, it's kind of like an out there, you know, the, they make, they make some of the best things. Um, but it's got a very, very like quirky, vulgar, but like hilarious tone. And Nathan Lane is in it, Megan Mullally's in it, and the two writers who wrote it are also starring in it. Um, and it's, the, the premise is just, I can't even begin to describe, um, but it's ridiculous and kind of has that cult classic vibe where you're maybe, I kept saying, I felt like I was watching a new Rocky Horror kind of, Ooh. where you're watching something that's like so ridiculous, um, but but like brilliant at the same time and just really, really fun. Anyway, so I went and saw that at the premiere last night and it was just a fun night of like, I mean, I had Nathan Lane next to me and it just... You know, like it was giving who who's who of like just like gay like people I grew up watching, you know what I mean? Um, and so that was really fun and I just don't usually drink on a weeknight and I'm feeling a little like heavy today. So to answer your question, other than that, um <laughs> I'm doing really good. What's your spirit of choice? Are you a tequila girl? Are you um a you said like a gin I, for some reason? I am a gin person. I'm a gin girl. I'm a gin girl. Um, and that's so funny. Like that literally came up. Uh, Simone was at the party, our girl uh, from Drag Race. And she was like, what are you drinking? And I was like, oh, it's whatever. This like tequila drink. She's like, we're doing a shot. And I'm like, okay. She's like, what do you do? What do you want to do a shot of? And I was like, tequila. She's like, but what do you normally? And we had this moment. I'm like, well, I'm normally a gin girl. And he was, it just was this funny, like, LOL that I had to explain that. But I was like, but we'll do tequila right now. Anyway. Um, but gin is my thing. Gin is, I feel like a very artsy people's. You saw how people like judge people by their horoscopes. I always pretend I know people from their horoscopes, even though I know nothing about it. But I can yeah. feel like pinpoint what people drink based on their personalities. Yeah, that's you. Well, you got it. You, you, <laughs> I wasn't always a gin girl, but I start at, like in my adulthood, I just really enjoy, I, I like what it tastes like and it makes drinks, I think, a lot more interesting um, mm -hmm. tasting. I love that. I love it. Look at us getting like super soul Sunday deep, like right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So I want to kind of go back to the, the beginning because um, one of the things that surprised me was that you were born in London. Oh yeah. Like, and then, and my family came from Greece. So I always love hearing stories from people when they came to America. Like, how did you guys end up from London to Miami? It is so it's actually like, 
Random. Um, so my mom was a diplomat and she wow. was working for the embassy of her country. Uh, she's from Honduras. And my dad had been living there already. Um, and when they had us, I don't think this was the plan, but um, my mom was out of a job and my dad had never filed for residency. Like no one was an actual resident of, um, of London for some reason. And my sister and I being born there uh, didn't grant us citizenship because a law had been changed a few years before my sister was born that in addition to being born in the country, you need to also have a British parent in order to get citizenship. It was like a, a law that like Margaret Thatcher changed to kind of, I think it was like her buckling down on like immigration or something. I don't, I don't know. Um, and so I just remember one day I came back from school and like, I, there were like boxes in the kitchen. I was like 11 years old. I don't really remember it, but all of a sudden we were just moving and we actually, we moved to Honduras first because that's where my mom's, you know, um, like our family is. And my dad's not really like, we're not really close to my dad's side of the family. And it was just like, where do we go to kind of figure this out or something like that? Um, and so we were in Honduras for like a year and then we moved to Miami um, because that was the closest place. It's kind of like if you're in Cuba and you're like, where do we go? You either go to like, you know, New Orleans or Miami. And so Miami was the place and my mom's sisters were living there. And so, you know, we just went where family was closest and that's how we got to Miami. Um, and yeah, it's, it's so, I didn't know that though at the time I learned this later, like when I was coming back from college and like getting to, you know, you, you start to become friends with your parents in a different way. And you're having conversations about like, wait, what happened that time? And you're, you're, you're all of a sudden, you're just like so curious. And I'm, and my mom explained it to me once. And I was like, oh, interesting. Okay. Like, it was just like. So random. Like, I think we call so it random. attacking trauma. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, and, and, and now, you know, I, I think it meant it was, it was more traumatic for my parents. Cause it was like, oh, sh I don't think she expected to be out of a job. Cause there was like a regime change with uh, presidencies and um anyway so it just was like i think it surprised everybody you know um but yeah so that's how i got to miami it sounds very like princess diaries in the beginning like <laughs> you were kind of like sort of like government royalty and then you came here and you didn't know it until like way later <laughs> i definitely i definitely like hold on to this belief that like i i mean i did i i lived a kind of a charmed life in London. We lived in a gray area. We lived in South Kensington, like it's, you know, right by Harrods. And like, I, again, growing up when I would tell people like, Oh, this is where I lived. And like, Oh, where are you from London? Then they, their reaction to what I where you know, the location I told them, they were like, Oh, they're like, you lived, you know, in the, such a posh neighborhood, all these things. I, but I didn't know that when I was a kid, I, it was just my house. <laughs> um, and so then all of a sudden I moved to Miami and like, you know, we weren't making the same amount of money and we, my parents weren't making the same amount of money. And like, I started to f notice like class systems and just understanding like, oh, like we're not living in the same way we used to. Um, and yeah, and it's, it's all the thing that has actually been, I think why I like want to make as much money as I want to make. And I wanted to be super independent because I was like, I don't want to ask for money from my parents anymore. Right. Like there was that whole thing of like, but it used to be so nice when we were younger. You know what I mean? <laughs> did you have an accent that just like went away? I did. It did? It did, yeah. Yes. I always say this. It's, I'm sure my friends hate, you know, hate me. But if there's a place where accents go to die, it's Miami. Oh, no. I feel like a lot of things go to die in Miami, but accents. Oh, but, you, but I say that, I say that, you know, kind of like, like I'm, 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 being, I'm being whatever about it. But um yeah, I had my, both my sister and I had one, but, uh, I think I read somewhere that like at age 11 is kind of this, it's like, if we would have stayed one extra year in London, it would have stuck is what people would have, is where people say. Um, but we moved and I'm quite like, if they, I have a good ear, so who, whatever's around me is kind of like what I start to sound like. And so, right. yeah. And like, if you met my sister, you would not believe we were related because she is giving like chola and like she's like oh ian God. how are you hello how are you like i miss you say hi to mommy like it's she's giving latina you know what i mean and like 
people think I'm from Ohio. They're like, you sound like you are from Cincinnati. Um, like just the most American <laughs> accent ever. It's crazy. I love that you guys each give different eras of Madonna. Like you're like, she's like Latina Madonna. And then you were like British Madonna. And then you're yeah. <laughs> white Madonna. It's like giving all of the Madonnas and I'm kind of here for it. Yes. Oh my God. She loves that trip that transatlantic like accent with her a's like kind of you're like where are you from madonna oh yeah. that's really funny it's bit, madonna ran so that dory kensley could walk yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yes 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 so Facts. obviously yeah so obviously you've done like really well like since moving here you're obviously a very artistic person and You've been on SNL, Lip Sync Battle, Dancing with the Stars, and the list goes like on and on. What made you kind of want to go into this into this business? Uh, well, my dad was an actor and uh, director when I was a kid, and he's in the business. Um, and so we were thrown into dance from a really young age. It was very like, I can do that chorus line. Like my sister went to dance class. And I was, you know, we were so close in age that like, we just did everything together. She was quite better at it than me at, at a young age. Um, and then I didn't really start taking it seriously, seriously until um, high school, because after when we moved from Miami, like we just really wanted to be normal kids. And I, you, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to do anything that made me stick out because I was already noticing I had an accent. We were joining a middle school where everyone knew each other. And there was the I'm gay. And so there's just so much about, I was like, I don't want any more attention. Um, and then, you know, I, so I lived a normal life from like sixth to eighth grade. And, and my dad was like, Hey, there's this high school. I went to new world school of the arts in Miami. And that kind of changed this whole trajectory for me. Um, where I started really taking, uh, acting and dance really seriously. Uh, and I found a true passion for it and I went to school for it. And so it's just been this, um amazing like gift that my that like my family supports me in and um i think now there are other things i could maybe find to do but it's just what i love to do i just like love dance and i love performing I, it's it's just one of my favorite things i love that and like we said before you really were part of that first wave of content creators that really blew up on tiktok did you ever think that that would ever happen to you or even that that would even be possible because obviously we grew up with you know the girl groups and the boy bands and like all these actors and actresses that were just like seasoned and put into these like factories and made into like who they were so we never really had really up until youtube people that were able to like be content creators and then blow up from there when when you guys were making your videos did you ever think that you would be where you are today um I, I definitely didn't. I think that I, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. like those years, I remember just like not believing what was going on. It felt, and you know, I'm, I am from a, like in the millennial kind of, I didn't grow up with social media at such a young, young age and it came later. So, and if you're an actor and you want to be taken seriously, like influencers were kind of um, like, uh, you know, looked down upon. It was just kind of like, what is that? We don't understand that. Like it was just, it's, and now it's a very different thing, but I, I, I remember thinking like, this is so not my bag. Like, this is just not what I ever planned. I'm a, I'm pretty private. And I was really private when I started dating Chris. And so it, the irony being that I became known and started, you know, kind of like growing a mass following being in a relationship i mean it was for being funny and all the other things and like what we did together but like that we did this as a couple was um just hilarious uh i just i could have never i would have never imagined that it happened especially during because co covid no one could have imagined that covid happened like now we talk about it and we say the word covid but like at the time it was really dark and you just didn't know, like you did not know what was going to happen. Everything. I've never been a part of a pandemic before, like a part of a pandemic, like it's a show, but yeah. like it just had never happened, you know? And right. so there were many, many firsts and like, I, I learned a lot. I learned that like, wow, okay. There's many, many ways to that. Just like life will throw you some crazy, crazy um, left field, you know, 
curveballs. That's crazy. And obviously not only just blowing up on TikTok, but you were like in a very public relationship because of TikTok. So I feel like I can't imagine being in a public relationship during a pandemic, let alone having a very public breakup in a in a pandemic because that has to be so crazy because I remember that my friends and I were like super invested in your relationship on TikTok, which has to be weird because these people think that they are they know your relationship and just because they're watching it and they're kind of interacting with you guys. And obviously when you broke up, people were also very invested, like what happened? Are they okay? Blah, blah, blah. Is it real? Is it not real? Do you think that being in a public relationship helped you mend better because you had so much support or do you think that it was harder because so many people were invested in it uh it it was way harder it was so hard it was the worst like i i i i'm very lucky that i have not actually experienced like a lot of um like loss in my life both my parents are here my immediate family everyone is very healthy like i and and i'm i'm very kind of like blessed in that way and i think like so i say that to say that this moment this like two year two and a half year relationship which meant a lot to me was the longest relationship i had had at the time and it was public and now to break up and have to handle the right. grieving process of that publicly is i just wouldn't wish that on anyone um, it was wild. Like, you know, I, I can talk about it now, but like, we wanted it to be very private. And I remember, um, you know, people started noticing we weren't making as much content together and just like what that kind of in the comment section and like what that was creating. Um, that's so weird. Like I always thought that it that was like, people like sleuths. Like, it's so weird that they're like looking into, it, you know? They were, inv- you know, it just, it's just, they were invested, which is, it's like kind of, it's, it's, you know, you could look at the positive that like they were really following the channel that was us. Right. right. Um, and they noticed these things. Uh, but what was wild is like, we weren't going to make an announcement or do any of that kind of thing. But then like a news outlet was going to run a story about us allegedly not being together and we had literally just broken up like two weeks before and it was still such a private like n- new thing and and but now all of a sudden we had to like you know um before we wanted to not really by choice all like get on top of this and like get ahead of it um and that when you're still process literally in real time trying to make sense of this moment this very private personal moment in your life is um was really like tough um anyway it's it it was hard it was like the worst that was that was like the worst year ever because i like had never been a i it's living in la alone there's like a lot of self-discovery that's come from it now but in the moment like i was really it's breakups are the worst breakups are the worst Mm -hmm. They really are. And I remember exactly where I was when I got the news. There's like three relationships that like when Brittany and Justin broke up, I remember where I was. When Reese Witherspoon and Ryan Phillippe broke up, I remember where I was. And I remember where I was when you guys like posted your video. So that's like, oh my God. (laughs) That is weird. Or that's just like, no, like, no, I think that's, I, I, I don't know. I think that's like very sweet. Like, I think that's, or, or yeah. Oh my God. There's a hummingbird on my tree right now is that a sign for you i you know i um in this moment i know it looks like it, it's like this but it's because they just move so fast and it's truly like catching a, a like a magical moment when they're just so still and they're like in front of you and i just want to be very present because i'm taking this in because it's just so beautiful it's so cute um but i do take it as like I like the energy of my, I guess, like my apartment. And I don't know. It's also just maybe the olive tree is, is giving <laughs> oh. a good aura. Um, no, I, I think it's, I think that I, uh, it's like sweet and kind of like, what are the chances of me being on your podcast? And you had such a sort of like deeper kind of connection to us in some way, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm big into manifestation and into just like things 
just not happening by chance and things just kind of working, you know, themselves out. And it's, it, it's so crazy. So maybe this one of those moments and I, like butterflies are very like um, symbolic for me. So maybe like a humming and hummingbirds are obviously like very symbolic to you. So this is a moment maybe, yeah. for a moment right now. Yeah. I love that. I love that actually. Maybe they are. Maybe I, I take, maybe I, I don't make it a thing, but now that we've just discussed, like they are a thing for me. Yeah. That's so crazy because I never actually thought about how they are really fast. So it is crazy when you actually see them for like a second, just like hanging out, <laughs> being hummingbirds. Killing. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that um, dating while you're famous is easier, would you say? Or would you say it's harder? Hmm. Um, well, in this last year and a half or two years now since my relationship i haven't really been like actively dating right. um i've been kind of just with myself and figuring my stuff out and um i mean I've, I've gone on some dates uh and hung out with people here and there but um i wouldn't say it's easier right. um i also just hate dating like i i'm not a dater person like mm -hmm. i it, I, it's weird. It's funny. Like I like rehearsal, <laughs> but I want to skip this rehearsal. Like I want to, can we just get to you knowing me? Can we just get to like, oh like, God, Oh, so like I already know my friends and we, we it's, you but, know, the, the having to sit and like do the, so tell me about yourself and like, I'm going to tell you about myself. And, and yeah. it's not that I'm not interested cause I'm quite, I am quite genuinely the most curious person. I love talking to people. I think it's one of my superpowers is that people feel very comfortable around me. Mm -hmm. And I literally like all of a sudden know six of your secrets, you know, it's like that kind of, I, I, I know I have that, but when there's pressure to, I'm on a date with you and right. there's a possible that it goes this route. I'm like, uh -huh, it's, it's giving audition. And I, so to say all of that, to say that, like, I, I avoid dating. I do kind of avoid it. Um, because I, I, I don't find it fun. I want it to, I want it to just like miraculously just like boop, show up yeah. and be like, okay, you, 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 yes, this, this works. I, I, the idea of you is enough. We don't actually have to do, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, my um, and I always joke about how like it, the first day is always like, not the worst, but it's like the most awkward because it's, you want to skip that and just be on like the fifth or sixth day where, you know, it's moving somewhere and you're like, yes, about it. And that, you know, that they're probably not like a serial killer. Yeah. 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 Like I just went on my first like official saw someone and we like found each other on social media and we went on a date mm -hmm. and it was, it went really well. We had a great time. Um, but then I could feel my armor coming on, like even like towards the end of the day. And then like the next day I was like, by my autonomy, I want to be, I want to be in my apartment. Like, you know, you just like, okay, that was good. And the, so now I want to go protect myself a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I had to clock the, are you of, are you, how are you feeling about it? Do you want to go on a second date? And so like, I'm, I'm really trying to not let, um, my past experiences or the way that I usually can be, um, from keeping me from getting to know someone uh, because I did enjoy myself. Uh, but that is very real. It's like, I just want to get to date four, five, six, but the yeah. only way you can get there is if you do date two, three, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I can't skip those things. Maybe the hummingbird was your sign. But... As, and it went, came back and it just went again. Maybe, wait, what's the sign that the hummingbird the the is, the hummingbird is we're gonna say that the hummingbird is a sign of like good fortune and uh, mm. telling you like yes do it That's okay fine. okay you're gonna have hummingbird oh, see, I'm... merch okay. <laughs> oh my god that's <laughs> such a good idea be a moment that, that is a... back a year from now <laughs> wow 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 I'll give you like ten percent if it happens um. That's so, yes, good fortune for sure. Say yes. But also, do you see, I'm so impressionable. Like all I need is like I, the inner child is me is just like, yes, tell me what to do. Like that feels good. Okay, I'll make, I'll make you happy, you know? And so that's the other thing in, in dating. 
yeah. is I'm clocking my people pleaseriness. Yeah, I'm the same way. And so that's like, I, I'm like, I want to hold on to my bat. I really like where I'm at and blah, 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 blah. But then there's this, you kind of have to, you have to just take, and that's just what I'm doing is I'm really aware of like the things I do and how much of saying yes to the second date or this, like, am I doing it for them? Did I really enjoy myself? Blah, blah, blah. Can you tell I overthink and I'm, I'm, I'm quite a. No, I'm the exact same way. I'm like, things could be like absolutely great. And then like, they'll tell me it's absolutely great. Like, like right now I'm going on like three years with my fiance. So like we, so like, but, but we started dating during COVID. So it was like, we didn't get it. We didn't hang out right away. Cause we couldn't, cause I was in Connecticut. He was in Boston. So it was like, we had to like get to know each other, which like never happens before we actually hung out, hung out, you know? So we had to wait like a good two, three weeks. So we had to like talk to each other and we had to like, be on the phone and get that awkwardness like out of the way that's what made it better when we actually hung out literally a long distance relationship i know it's like oh it's long distance like we love to say like i wish they were here that's like the whole gag with long distance i'm like yes i know you do but you're you're loving having your apartment to yourself Mm -hmm. and there's a beauty about like i get to talk to you on the phone and we get to have like the getting to know but like then i can press end and i'm still with me and it's like less pressure yeah, and you get to actually miss each other and actually like tell them about things that happened and things you're excited about and you're like genuinely excited to like see each other. And I think that that's yeah. a, a big part of it too. And I don't know, I, I hear friends that they live like 20 minutes away from like who they're dating and they're like, oh, it was like, we couldn't really make it work because like they're like 20, 30 minutes away and we're both like really busy. And I'm like, you don't want No. <laughs> that's literally no, uh, nothing. <laughs> that's that's that person didn't want to date that person and how dare they say that it was because they're just 20 they're just 30 minutes away i couldn't do that yeah lol that's lol to me like okay i'm like so that probably wasn't um the one (laughs) from i wasn't for you okay just say it (laughs) yeah how do you feel about i always love to talk about like confidence in relationships especially in like you know the queer world because i feel like it can be very difficult, especially on social media, because, you know, especially when the DMs are DMing and people are shooting their shots in the comments or, you know, things like that. What advice do you have for couples that maybe get jealous or when that happens? Because it's inevitable, I feel like, you know what I mean? Like, obviously you're dating somebody who you find attractive and other people find them attractive too. So people are going to shoot their shots and try to- You mean like- you mean like the the sort of you know seductive way that when you're in relationship people the people are still trying to yeah. like how do you kind of okay i see what you're saying um well you're kind of asking like a person who i'm like catnip for couples my friend rob gave me this title literally like we were in barcelona and we were just chatting and just like, cause he just knows me so well. And he was like, maybe you're catnip for couples. <laughs> like, and so I don't know if I'm the right person to ask. Um, because I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I just really am oversharing, but I say that to say that like, I can see both sides that like, it kind of depends if in, in, if you're in the relationship and you have an openness to be allowed to kind of talk to right. people and get sexy or whatever, like, you know, um, or if not, uh, and you you really hold strong to just kind of keeping it between you two, right. I think it just comes down to like, I know everyone says this, but like, I need I need like over communication. Yeah. Um. I learned I learned it's fun, kind of too a little too what is it uh too little too late but like I ironically was not the best communicator with Chris. Right. And I actually have a hard time communicating with people I care about and, and who, people I love because I don't want to hurt them. And it just makes me uncomfortable. But it, the, the stem of it is like, if I tell you this or set this boundary, I may lose you. And so I don't say anything, but then that hurts us. And, you know, that's its own cycle. Um, and so like this year has been a really big year of like, <clears throat> growth for me with friendships and and being able to communicate boundaries and like needs to friends and needs to people who um you know I'm I'm intimate with and so 
if you're in a couple like and you're you know i mean you know like you're you're in three years you're with your fiance like i need i i need the reassurance that always helps me feel like i i'm with you we're here together um and like you know things happen all the time but i think it's how you mend the so like let's say something happened that was not allowed or you know the other person felt that that was inappropriate i think it's how you handle it after is is where the 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 work and kind of like um the fabric of your right relationship right. really starts it, it it's like that's where you 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 make that like that's where you kind of like need that bread you know what i mean yeah well cuz that's the thing that i always like obviously communication is key and i don't think it's annoying i got a couple questions of people asking me when I put on my story that we were doing the interview and I got a lot of people asking, well, how do you guys feel about when, you know, you or your significant other is posting like sexier content or whatever. And that's something that never really bothered me because I'm obviously like, like Ralph is like my fancy. He's very like super confident and like, he'll post like sexy photo shoots and I'm more comfortable being just like funny and cute as opposed to like, just like sex so I'm just like that's fine with me and I always laugh because I always help him shoot his content and I'm always like no do it this way do it that way I'll help him edit yeah like a part of it yeah like I'm pretty much like so like a part of it so it's like that never bothered me and obviously you're somebody who you post like sexy content you know what I mean is that something that do you agree like do you think it's not a big deal because I don't I think it's I think you know you it work hard and you should show it off I feel like there's nothing wrong with that there is nothing wrong with it. Um, <laughs> I mean, like my, I have my best friend, John Eric literally always jokes whenever we're like FaceTiming. He's like, can you put a shirt on? Can you, do you ever not wear a shirt? I'm like, baby, I'm in my own home. I will, I will be how I am. You know, like I do naturally just like live kind of like, like that, even if I was fit or, or, or wasn't. Um, but I, I do, I do think it, it, it has, it really just depends like where you are in your life. Like I remember when I first started dating um, a boyfriend and they were post, they, they, they were doing the like photo shooty thing and I started to get possessive of them. And I, and, and it brought up things about like, well, the world gets to see that picture before me. And like, I remember we had a conversation about that and I was like, I think I would just, I don't know. I would want to see them first Oh, before you post and like that kind of control now that I'm talking about it is like it I, I didn't love maybe where that was stemming from because it was coming from a like a like a probably a jealous insecure place for me mm -hmm. um but now maybe when I'm not so in it and if you if I remove myself from that situation or just you know from the equation in general like I just think like let people live you know what I mean um and the whole thing with social media is everyone's going to have an opinion. So people are going to be like, don't you blah, blah, blah. Isn't that? And it's like, uh, baby, I, I don't care. <laughs> we don't care. We're good. You know what I mean? Um, like I have enough intrusive thoughts, but now we've got the comment section and these people who are giving you their thoughts and like, you know, um, how do, yeah. Like I, I think you guys are obviously handling that and you guys have a great communication about it. Um, I would hope that if in my next relationship, I was with someone who wanted to share kind of like, like that way and sexy content or whatever, like post that picture of themselves. Like I would hope that I am not as possessive of them. And all I could do is just be like, they're my beautiful partner and I, I want them to show themselves off. Um, you know, but like to, it, it also, may, I, I'm also, I can be like very, live your life blah, blah blah but i can also be very judgy and like kind of like nah, i can be the mom you know like right. it's um it's always both it's like sometimes i'm like yes and then depending on my mood i'm like mm -mm, i'm not feeling that i'm not feeling that moment you know what i mean it just depends literally on my mood i love that i think it's i don't know like you said it's all about i feel like the person that you're with and the communication that you had and I feel like your partner knows what you're comfortable with and what you're not you know it's, it's not like he's ever posted like you can literally see like his whole you know Pikachu it's not like he, and, I, and he's like oh I didn't know you would get mad about that and I'm like 
you know what I mean? I feel like you and your partner like know kind of what is appropriate and what's like too sexy and what's like, you know, not, you know, shouldn't yeah. be on the gram. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got um another question I got is um people asked what is like a first date deal breaker for you and what is something that <laughs> super excited for a second date? Okay. Um a deal breaker I guess would be because this happened to me and I remember I was like, no, I don't trust that when someone is so absolute in their, um, I will never do that, 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 well, uh, yeah, the, I will never thing. I'm always like, mm, I don't, I don't either. I, I like, I just like, don't believe you slash. I don't trust. Right. I don't love that. You, you don't have an openness or like that you're willing to explore. And I will, I will explain. I went on a first date with an ex we dated for like a few months um and on our first date he asked me he was like how do you feel about open relationships and i was like uh i actually don't i don't know like i because i hadn't really been dating a lot and i was like I've, I've been very single a lot a lot of my life like i was very career oriented in new york and so you know he was like the first person i was like taking seriously with like trying to actually date and when he asked that, the, the real answer was like, oh, I have no idea. I've never really thought about it. But I would imagine that, like, I would want a foundation first. and But just, like, who knows? It would depend on the person. Right. Uh, but, like, I think right now, like, I want, you know, monogamy or something like that. And he was like, okay, good. He's like, because if you said um, open relationship, I was like, I don't know that this I, – I, I would – it was very like, I don't know that we would have continued, like, or gone on a second date. And just in that moment, that kind of, like – like a setup question. I don't like those. Kind of. Yeah. I was just like, uh, interesting. Um, it, it, yeah, it just, it was this moment of like, are you not open? Not, it's not about open to being open, but just like open-minded. Yeah. Just like, you just never know what's going to, who you're going to become in the next month, year, five years. Um, so I think like first, first date is, it's like, come in, share who you are, but like, I don't know. That was just aggressive. It was, a, it was a giving. Well, I, we get that question too all the time. And my answer is always like, we're not, but like maybe in, I don't know, when you're with somebody for like a couple years, 10 years or whatever, and you're on vacation and you're open to the idea because someone's hitting on you guys, then you're like, let's try it. You know, I, I don't like coming from a place where like, I'm like, oh my God, like nobody should do this. It should just be done this way. And because obviously different things work for different couples, things work for different friendships, you know, let alone romantic relationships. So it's like, I always found that interesting. And that that was actually a question I was going to ask you was about the open relationships. And I feel like I agree with you where you should never say like, oh, we'll never, ever, ever do this. And like, if you were even considering it, like we can't even, we can't even, I feel like that's part of, life and relationships and, and exploring and but that's also like dating somebody and finding out what you like in bed or that you don't like in bed or that you don't like for other activities and things like that like you try it and then you see if it's for you guys and if it's not then you just don't do it you know yeah yeah and I I will also say like I it's very easy when you're not in a relationship right now I'm single to it's you know you're you my outlook is like you know you're catnip. super open and I'm catnip um, for couples, but like, there's just this, it's because I'm not in it. It's a lot easier. I, I and I, I know this, like um, to say, just, you know, try and open and like go explore. But I, sometimes I've been in, in the, in the situation and it is really hard. And like, it's just so much easier said than done to be like, Oh, like, yeah, try it out or whatever. And then you do, and you're in it. You're like, wow, feelings are coming up. Jealousy pops up. Insecurities pop up. Like the risk of losing you. Yes. I want maybe my fun, but then that means you get to go have fun. Are you going to go start enjoying the fun more? Like so much of that pops up. And, and so like, I, 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 I just, like relationships are literally the hardest class in school. And so if you're in one, because life is school and we just are adults with hopefully paychecks and bigger paychecks than we did in high school, you know, like, and this class is just never ending. If you're in the class of relationship, baby, you're in school every day. Oh yeah. Do you um, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
what is your um your one thing that we said if you were on a date that it's it makes you very eager for a second day it makes you very intrigued mm. I the, these were the first words that just popped in my head so I'm gonna say them but like a sexy indifference like uh like I don't know I I I I like someone who doesn't feel like they need me right but it's nice but yeah like that's like that's like a that's an energy thing um of just kind of like it's like not too it's it's you're there and we're we're connected but it's like it's not so aggressive and it's not so um it's not not affectionate's not the word but like I don't know. Like I, I kind of like a mystery. Mystery to me is, 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 is sexy. Um, so if there's a little bit of mystery still left after that first date, I'm more curious. And so I want to, I want to learn more. Um, I also think like, I don't do this all the time. Um, but I think like maybe saving sex for not first date is, also a good idea. I know for me, that's really helpful because, you know, it's like, oh, mom, mom, I want that toy. You get the toy and then you like play with it once and then you want another toy. So right. I have to be very conscious about and just like in the, this is just like how I think everyone is. Um, it's not just me, but I need to be conscious about like not getting that dopamine rush right. and fix, excuse me, like right then and there, like to 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 drag that out so that I can really get to know this person and see what that's all about, you know? Well, yeah, because it's like that moment where um, I was talking about, uh, we were talking about different topics for the podcast and we were we're going to be having some like people that are like sex therapists and relationship therapists. And one of the things we were talking about was that feeling of like when you do have sex with somebody and then you finish and then you're just sitting there and it's just like you're completely unattached in that moment. And then you're like, you just want to leave and... And how do you not, you know, how do you fight that feeling? And, and the advice that I was given the, that we were given was it's because you weren't really that attracted to that person. It was like that dopamine rush. Like you said, it's just like having sex, getting it over with. And they're like, okay, I'm just going to go now. It's like, it's like eating like something that's not good for you that you were craving, like ice cream or something. And then afterwards you're like, oh my God, I wish I didn't eat that. Or it didn't fill me up the way I thought it was going to. Now I just feel gross. Yeah, that's huge. Wow, that you weren't really attracted to them in the first place. It was just the idea of that's huge. I mean, that's that's and that's why I'm saying like even after my first date with this guy last week, like I'm really trying to take stock of why do I want to continue and is it, you know, like asking those questions. Um just being mindful. I think like being mindful in your relationships, being as mindful as you can when you're out of one and you maybe want to jump, you want to get into one. Um, and it, it takes literally like practice to nudge your brain to, to, you know, like train it to be ready for and train your heart um, so that you're not making dopamine fix rush choices. Oh my God, we're getting so deep. Like who thought? <laughs> always, always, <laughs> I always somehow we go from like Real Housewife and like Dicks the Musical, and then all of a sudden we're talking about like addiction and trauma and just like <laughs> it's always both like holding space for that, and then right. like, we can talk about this yeah. always. I love that, which um, leads me into milestones because we just made a milestone, so now we're talking about the milestones you've already had. Um, what would you say is your biggest accomplishment so far in your career? Oh, wow. That's always a tough question. Mm. It is a tough question because you kind of have, you, you sort of, you go back and you think, oh, like what's gone so, what's gone so well. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a, a beautiful thing to kind of go back into the memory, um, vault just life-wise or career? Oh, it could be life. It could be career. I feel like sometimes I feel like we're too fixated on our career milestones that we've reached. And yeah. We forget to say, hey, I overcame being like insecure about this. And we forget like our personal like milestones that aren't necessarily like paycheck related or like Wikipedia. Yeah. Related. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, this year has been a really big year of like introspection and, and really asking some questions. Like I was with myself a lot. Um, and, and I think a big milestone is for me, like that I, um, like I can do, I can do what I want to do in my life and be with myself and I can do it not like alone, but like, I am okay by myself. Like you, um, like just kind of learning to be on my own two feet and not like, I don't know. I, I, I have like not feeling like I'm, I need people to take care of me. Right. Um, and so like realizing that like I, actually take do a really good job of taking care of myself and that feels really nice like that's that 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 kind of um realization this year and getting to kind of just feeling good about that was huge for me um because just after breakup and this and that and like you know you're just you feel so lost and you're like who am i what 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 am i doing I need, do I need someone else to make, you know, we, we, it's like, we need someone else to make us feel like we're another person. You know what I mean? Like if I'm by myself, how do I, who's the mirror to me to, to, for me to see me. And so a milestone was like, Oh, I see me this year. I see me more than I ever have. I love that. I always say that it's night. Nice, it's okay to need like without feeling like we're being needy. Like it's okay to be yeah. like this. And I know that I want this and I deserve this without like being needy about it. So I feel like people kind of get lost in that sometimes. And they think that by like saying, well, I need this for myself, like how you like to have your space and how you like to be alone when you want to be alone. And I'm like that too. So I feel like that's not really being needy about anything. It's just like being open with what you actually need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It made sense. Sorry, I was just thinking. No, no, it's just, I was just thinking like, so I tend to or have tended to be a, like a, avoidant in terms of my attachment style. And, um, and so if a person who's like super secure is someone who's like, who I'm, you know, in interacting with, yeah. they to me seem needy because I'm so far on the avoidance scale that their securedness is still needy to me, if that makes sense. Um, and, and I've done obviously a lot of reading on all of this. And like, even after this relationship, I went from avoidant attachment style, cause you can take the test. Right. There's like, there's a book called attached. If anyone doesn't know, it's a great book. Um, and it kind of just goes in and out of, or it explains your attachment styles. And I took the test and I was like, wow, now I'm anxious avoidant because I like it, it or not. I don't know the reasoning, but it's just hilarious that beforehand, before relationship, intense relationship, I was avoidant. And now after I'm anxious avoidant because I'm scared to lose it or, you know, you know, like, so, but I'm getting closer and closer to secure, hopefully. Um, yeah, it's, it's, anyway, it's an ever, you're just always, always learning, always growing. I love that. I don't know where that came from. No, I love that. It's like so deep. <laughs> um, speaking of milestones, obviously you have met like a ton of, celebrities you know since you know since you blew up and who are some celebrities that you met that you were starstruck with and then who are some celebrities that you were surprised were starstruck to meet you uh, humble brown um, oh my god um wow 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 <laughs> It's, it's, that's, that's kind of my memory. Like, um, who are some people I've met that I've like kind of freaked out? Oh, you know, what's interesting is when we were first blowing up and it was during pandemic, like you, you, you weren't really able to go, like nothing was happening. We couldn't do anything. So, um, I didn't really get to like meet everybody, but like there were moments where, you know, we went to like a Spotify party that was hosted at a house in like the Hills and, and like, you know, like Dixie D'Amelio was there and some other TikTokers that I had no idea were TikTok. Like, I didn't know who that, cause I like wasn't the, I'm, a, I'm like on the app, but I don't scroll on it. So the running joke between Chris and I at the time was just like, you're, you're like literally known by everybody, but you don't know anybody. Like, I don't know who anyone is cause I just don't scroll on it. I do now, um, more so, but like, oh God, like, 
Dixie being like, hi guys, like, it's nice to meet you. And I was like, oh my God, like, yeah, you're Dixie D'Amelio. Like, um, uh, hello, Connecticut. But <laughs> she's a Connecticut girl. Yeah, she actually they grew up. Um, my cousin Katie is from Norwalk and she teaches in Stanford. And they were, I think they were from Norwalk, actually. They're from the same. Oh, wow. Cousins. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's, it's, no shade to them, but like that cannot be my answer. You know what I mean? I'm just giving you an example of like, um, God, who are some famous people who have like been starstruck by? Uh, I, we haven't met, but like I just remembered follows were a big deal. Like when I was getting followed by some celebrities, like Jessica Chastain followed us and me like two years ago. And I remembered that was huge. It's you, you, cause actors are, you know, I like, I'm an actor. You grew up watching these people on the screen and like, it's very cool. Um, and I remembered that was, that was like, that was amazing. Um, but people that I've met and been super starstruck by, like, I mean, yesterday, Nathan Lane was huge. Just being in the room with him, like those kind of things. Those are moments that like, I don't even know if it's about like, having an interaction or not, but just that I, you know, I had a moment with my friend Donnell when we were sitting there. I was like, oh, it is very cool to be like a part of this group. And he was like, you're amongst these boys. And I was like, oh, you're right. Like I was, I felt imposter. I was like, I'm a guest here. Like I don't meet blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, maybe like you're, yeah. He's like, you're among the group of these men of, of, of this, of like gay I love that it's like that, that I, I just love that we're gay. You know what I mean? Because growing up, I didn't always see it. It was like later in life that I saw like a Jack McFarland or understood the birdcage in the way that I understand it now. You know what I mean? It whispered. It wasn't like, you know. Yeah, it was just different. And so the way, I don't know, there's, uh, there's probably a study of, that we could do about this, but like I loved my Ursulas. I loved my Maleficent. I loved like, those campy, like, you know, women characters because they were the most fun to watch and they were the gayest in some way. Um, and so now I have like, you know, you, you get older and you're like, Oh, that, like that actor was doing that then these are the movies. So when I'm around those people, Nathan, like if I met Robin Williams, who's not gay, but if I, you know, like those people are the things that like, those interactions are very cool to me. That's where the child in me like really freaks out. I love that you've obviously done like so much already in in your career and what may seem like a small span of time like you know you've been able to do things that people that have been working their whole lives haven't you know been able to to achieve yet and with achieving so much what would you say is next to you what would you want to be to be your next chapter um that's so uh, Beshert that you said that um, for anyone who doesn't know Beshert means destiny in Yiddish uh, so I actually want to write a book um, about that experience like the sort of like relationship and what I learned about myself and just through TikTok I just think it's like a fascinating moment in my life that you're just kind of like what would make for a great movie um, and I would, I think it would be really healing and fun to write like a novel about that. Uh, and just like, it doesn't have to be about like Chris and I like specifically, but maybe based on, um, because I, I think like, I think a lot of people could learn something about just sure. the ins and outs of that. And it would probably be really fun to, to, to do. So that's like something that I would want to, um, kind of work towards. You could be riding a giant hummingbird on the cover. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Takes that. I'm writing down notes right now. But yeah, that that would be fun. And just like you know, I think a fun fun. That's like kind of like deepish artist, you know. Um, but then an, I would love like a talk show. I would be so. F- I love talking to people. I love talking to peers about you know, the, the culture and like, what, how are you, how are you doing? How are you feeling? What, what makes you, what's making you feel good? Well, that's funny because when I started doing, like I've been doing interviews for years and I took a break, um, you know, a couple of years ago after my mom passed away and I didn't really want to like do all that stuff. And I was like, you know, I'm finally ready to get back into doing it. 
And it was so crazy to me when I would ask people, how are you? And it was my favorite question to ask because I didn't realize how many people like you today, you, you stop and you, you actually wonder like, how am I like, you know, how am I actually doing? And we really don't ask each other that question like enough. It's always like, Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Like, good to see you. But it's never like, unless you're like with your therapist or something, it's never like, well, how like, are you like, how are you actually? And then you go, you know what? I'm happy today or today. I'm kind of sad, but you know, I'm, it's okay to be sad or to be happy. You know, it's okay to emote those emotions. And that was my favorite thing. And it still is to ask people because it throws some people off in like a good way because the sad thing is we don't ask each other enough. Like, how are you? And like, how are you like actually? So I love, yeah. I could totally picture you having a talk show and like giving people like, I always tell people, I give people advice and I have no uh, right giving because I don't really know what I'm talking about half the time. It's just all from experience. <laughs> I'm yeah. Like, but that I was such a hard, sorry. I was just going to say like, um, some uh, that's been a, a narrative of mine too. Like even after the whole TikTok thing, you know, like at the at the height of it, everyone was like, "Oh my god, I want Ian to be my therapist. Like he's such a good communicator. Like give us advice, give us advice." And I remember being like, "I have no right to be giving you this advice. Like I am a messed up person as well. I have my own like." you know, addictions and things and, and vices. Like, I'm just, I'm a human who I, I am not qualified for this is what I was thinking. And a lot of the time, and that made it, that was a hard thing to feel like people were, were, were wanting from me. And I was like, I don't want that responsibility. Um, but now I actually, I, I had to rest that narrative and like put her to bed because like I said, a superpower of mine is like, I do help people feel better. I, I make people feel better and it makes me feel better. And so like, I would love to have a talk show where like I therapize with my friends and I therapize with people about life um, because that's, it's okay to, it's literally, it's, it's just conversation. Right. Um, and it might be not coming from a, like an actual psychologist, but if I make you feel better after our conversation, then what's what's wrong with that? I would love to be the Ross Matthews to your Drew Barrymore if you ever do have a talk. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> yeah, something like that would be fun. Speaking of these moments, I like to ask my guests on this podcast. Um, obviously, we talked a little bit before an in interlude. It, we grew up big Janet fans, obviously, who, I, who I'm convinced invented interludes. I don't care what anybody mm. says. <laughs> she is the queen. If, even if she didn't invent them, she is the queen of them. Yeah. And I always ask people, an interlude is obviously, it's a pause between acts. It's a preview of what is to come next. So in this moment, Ian, what is your interlude? Uh, um, God, I feel like I've been, I've, I've been an interlude for, for the last like nine, nine months. Um, Oh my God, what is my interlude right now? I know I've said it a couple of times already, but like I am on this kind of self-discovery, like who am I phase? And like, wh what do I, who am I? What's, what's the, what's my voice? And like letting that out. Um, so I'm in this phase of, of um, like coming back, coming back to myself and uh, like feeling good about that and, and kind of like, not giving a flying fuck about what other people think. That's such a, frame. that's like, yeah, like that's this, that's that place I'm in right now of like building habits that just allow me to be. I love that. This was literally so fun. I always like try to, whenever I finish an interview or we're like, we're wrapping one up, I always love to just like, kind of like take it in. And this really didn't feel like, like I try to make, these moments not feel like interviews I always want them to be very conversational and like I'm happy that we were able to do that and to just feel like two friends like talking shit about relationships and things like that so I really really wanted to say thank you for I know you're super busy so I I'm very very thankful that you took the time to to chat with me and to open up with me and to of course dream with me and and all that fun stuff yes yes i love that i love that i it and i love i just have to say like your energy you just have such a warm inviting curious um 
energy and, and I'm really happy that this was this was able to happen. And it, it's really it was really nice. Me too. I follow you on Instagram, obviously. Um, so I'm so excited to see what you have coming up and on TikTok and everywhere. So um obviously where is the best place for people to keep up with you? Um yeah, my TikTok is at Ian Paget underscore and then um on Insta, I am at Ian Paget, I A N P A G E T. And uh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Yay, I'm so excited. Thank you again for chatting with me. I'm so excited to see what you have coming up. And I hope that um, in the future we'll have many more sit downs together. And I would love that. Celebrating things that we talked about today. <laughs> yes oh my god that would be such a nice full circle moment i'm looking forward to it thank you and i'm gonna send um when we're done here i'm gonna email your peeps and i'm gonna send you um i have my like first hoodies coming out for my podcast so i make want to make sure that i send you one so this oh is my the god front and then this is the um, oh my god that looks really great and i love that color thank you well then i'm gonna send you a green one so i'm, I'm gonna make sure that yeah. they can figure it out i'll send it over to you and um okay whatever you wear it you are thinking about your interlude in this moment <laughs> oh my god i love that i love that oh this is so fun too. i'll make sure to like i said i follow you um so i'll probably see you somewhere in the social media world but um let us know when okay. you're on the post and we'll grab like coffee or something fun i will i will and venture out I'll, i'm a tequila guy but i'll venture out into the gin world okay okay <laughs> uh, yes i think you'd enjoy i think so too <laughs>